I swiped right for five months on a mission to make new friends. I was living for the plot and here's five things that I learned while I was going on Bumble before dates. Stick around and not only will you get all the tea on my friend date, but I will also share with you my number one tip for getting those online DMs offline. Let's get to it. One of the harder periods in my life is when all of my friends in very healthy, happy relationships and I just ended yet another horrible situation ship. And that's where I was. Now, don't get me wrong. All my friends are very supportive and amazing. But sometimes it just hits differently when you want a spontaneous night out on Collins Street and plans just never make it out of the group chat. Honestly, it happens. Sometimes you don't want to have to wait around and sync up three different social calendars. I was craving some real spontaneous fun. So my mission was clear. I wanted to make some new single friends and shake some ass. Obviously the era of social media has really changed the way that we establish friendship and nurture relationships. There's a book by Kate Lever called The Friendship Cure and she talks about that even though society's technology and dynamic has really evolved, our innate craving for true connection and friendship remains the same. It's literally the way that we feel that we connect with our community and how we really just crave those connections because it's part of our survival instincts. So Leva writes in her book, friendship is at its simplest form defined as mutual affection, but it's also an alchemy of several different elements like trust and respect and empathy. It's a kind of undefinable warmth that feels a lot like romantic love. In our world of swipes, likes and DMs, forging genuine connections can feel real daunting. But as Leva suggests, Whilst the medium may change, the essence of friendship remains the same, in addition to our unchanging desire to forge those connections. And whilst this experiment I tried on myself wasn't exactly an attempt to collect friendships, I definitely came out of this period a lot richer in friends, a whole new perspective on what it's like to, to play the numbers game. Besides, I figured there's nothing to lose. Even if I didn't gain new friends, I would have some killer stories to share over dinner. So how exactly did I get the girlies? I mentioned that for five months, I went on friend dates relentlessly. And my biggest tip to getting those friend dates is actually to be as audacious as possible. And I said audacious, not aggressive, so don't be weird about it. So what does it mean to be audacious? You know what your main objective is, it's to make new friends. So you don't actually have time to be shy. The thing is, I don't want to sound sanctimonious. And at the same time, I don't want this to be misconstrued. I think if you have any sense of social awareness, you know that to be audacious is very different to being weirdly pushy. If you're a woman, you know what it's like when guys are weirdly pushy with you. And you know what it's like when a guy is audacious with you and there's a charm to it. I feel like there's a bit of a fine line, but I'm not gonna stay on this one topic for too long. What I am encouraging is that in a world where you are wanting to make new friends, you're trying to step out of your comfort zone. And to do that, you have to have a confidence going in that there's nothing to lose. You either get the friendship or you get the experience to be a better friend yourself. So then it's easier to make new friends later on. So where did I even get this audacity? I remember there was a period of time in my life where I really just wanted to go clubbing. I really wanted to dance. I really wanted to shake some ass. And it wasn't even to pick up or any of that stuff. I obviously was fresh out of a situation ship. So I wasn't ready for all of that. But I wanted to dance, I wanted to dress up, I wanted to look cute, and I needed a group of girlfriends to do that with. I swiped right on profiles of girls that I thought would be on the same wavelength. So either they actually explicitly state that on their profile or they just give off that vibe. If they had a username on their bio, I would DM them directly on Instagram. And I would say something along the lines of, hey, person's name, I spotted you on Bumble Biffle and I thought I'd do a friendly DM slide. Looking for some girlfriends to rally up if you're interested for a night out. And that was it. It's very simple. One thing I always made sure I did was ensure that my profile was public and I could prove that I was a real person and I was just not some weird creepy dude trying to hit them up. What I'm trying to say is my hit rate with this strategy was 9 out of 10. And girl math would say that's a great formula. I was always down for a good time, just as importantly, the girls that I met were also having a good time. They were ready to meet some friends, they were ready to go dancing, or whatever it is that we ended up doing, and it was a win-win situation for everyone. It meant that I was always meeting new people, going to new places, and even if that particular group of girls I've only ever hung out with once for that particular night, that was enough. It was a cool experience, and it really shifted me out of a scarcity mindset. 
in terms of the kind of people that I could make friends with and the kind of places that I wouldn't usually go to but would be very open to going to now. So all that's to say is when it comes to making friends and Bumble Biffle spree, you really have to have just audacity and just go for it. Number two, embrace awkwardness. I've I've been lucky, honestly. But the girls that I've met haven't been straight out of a psycho thriller. That's not because I've gone through this whole saga without experiencing any sort of awkwardness. It's mostly because I just don't care enough when things are awkward. I can usually just laugh it off. So if you're diving into the world online friendship making, I guess, being mentally prepared for some awkwardness is literally just the spice of life. So how exactly do you do it? It's basically reminding yourself that every single person that you will ever meet, even the very ultra glam girls that you see on Insta and on TikTok, they have had their own share of very cringy moments. Even the term cringy, like I hate it. I think my brand is cringy, so just embrace it. I think it's so important to just recognize it, laugh at it and just own it. <laughs> You don't even have to be quick on your feet and have very witty, zingy one-liners because I know I don't. When something awkward happens, as it's bound to, just chalk it up and learn to laugh at it and laugh at yourself. I feel like disarmingly charming people are the ones who can just brush off really awkward moments because they know that in the grand scheme of things, like who's gonna remember and who's gonna care. The bottom line is everyone's been there. Those really cringy moments, our short attention span is just unlikely to even register it unless it's very memorable in which case just learn to laugh it off and then it just becomes an inside joke number three have discernment know which people are your people and which ones just don't match your energy having having discernment is about tuning into your intuition and being aware of the energy exchanges between you and this other person are the conversations forced or do they flow naturally are there shared values and interests or is it very superficial? Here's the thing, having discernment is so important because you have to recognize that it is okay to have very superficial friendships. It all really comes down to what it is that you want out of this. So if you're just looking for friends that you can go out with, that's okay. And I think if you put too much pressure on yourself to want very deep DNMs all the time sort of friendships, that's okay too. Whatever it is that you want, I think it's so important to like one, not judge yourself and two, not judge others on it. Who cares? You'll know at whichever stage you are in life, there are different types of friendships that you need. Going back to discernment, I think outside of just having that sort of awareness, it's really just about recognizing whether this person that you want to be friends with has the emotional and mental dynamics that align with you and with what you're seeking in a friend. If something feels off, chances are it is. I really want you to lean into trusting your intuition when it comes to people. Even if you meet a really nice person and everyone says that they're nice, but something about them just doesn't sit right with you, I think just trust your gut. I mean, I know I do. I don't really question it. If something's off about someone, even if it's just the vibes are off, there's just too many people in the world to stick out friendship that don't make you feel spiritually nourished. I think whilst it's essential to be polite, I just don't believe in clinging onto connections that don't resonate. And this goes for both platonic and romantic, just any connection. Edna Buchanan writes in her book that friends are the family that we choose for ourselves. So it's a friendly reminder that friendships just like any relationship requires a choice that you make and a reciprocal energy of respect. I remember that there was this one girl in particular who I met for the first time. She ended up coming to the club like three hours late and by that time the group I was with was ready to disperse or you know ready to go home. My Virgo ass self was already planning the logistics of going home and just making sure all the girls I was with were able to get home safe and were all accounted for. Which side note you don't have to feel like you are responsible for everyone even if you're the one who technically organized for all these girls to meet up. I just think I pay it forward a lot because I remember you know when I was a lot younger and going out partying and clubbing there was always a mum of the group who made sure that everyone was looked after and I feel like I've just sort of like slid into that role. When that girl finally came, even though she was super lovely, super nice, there was there was no red flags about her, aside from the fact that she came very late. There was just something I just didn't feel like I clicked with. It could just be the lateness, to be honest. Anyway, the next time she asked me out, um, I was already at a bar and I was like, you know what? Maybe I was too quick to judge. 
I'm already out, I'm happy to meet her. What ended up happening was she was once again late and I don't even think she ended up rocking up. It was very fortunate that I was already out with a different group of girls, so it all sort of worked out. But the next time that this same girl asked to hang out, I just politely declined and I never really spoke about it again. Just as I would be when I'm dating romantically, one of the main rules when it comes to platonic relationships for me is that there has to be a mutual respect of other people's time and space. Punctuality is such a big thing and I think it's just so underrated. For me personally, it's a deal breaker. I think discernment is like having your best friend's intuition but for yourself. The way I see it is if any behavior sort of strikes you as being odd and not something that you'd be happy for your best friend to go through, just don't put yourself in that situation. Safely remove yourself and just keep it pushing. Number four, set boundaries. My personal favorite topic. As a recovering people pleaser, boundaries wasn't something that I understood or knew how to communicate until very late into my 20s. It took a few hard lessons, a couple of overextended favors before I truly understood that having boundaries isn't selfish, it's actually self-preservation. So just imagine you've clicked with someone and they're fabulous. They spill their life to you on day one and you're down for it, you're down to listen but you're not quite ready to share yours. That's a personal boundary and that's okay. I think it's important to think of boundaries as your personal GPS, just for navigating the world. They guide you in this whole journey, ensure that you don't veer off to territories that make you feel unsafe. I know I talk a lot about putting yourself out there and like, you know, shifting out of your comfort zone, but there's a huge difference between getting comfortable with the uncomfortable and just feeling safe within your body. I think you're the only person who needs to get comfortable with that and with your own boundaries and that's how you get more confident about expressing your boundaries. Knowing what your boundaries are and setting your boundaries is about understanding your own needs, your own values and priorities and learning how to communicate them. Expressing these boundaries are so pivotal. It's about being transparent and vocal about what makes you tick and what ticks you off. It does save you from a lot of potential miscommunication and in the long run, it's just a good skill to have. So if you're not perfect with expressing your boundaries right off the bat, that's okay. I think you just need to be mindful of it and continuously flex it like a muscle. And just as important as it is to communicate your boundaries, it's a two-way street. So you also need to respect people's boundaries when they express it. And finally, five, expectations and reality. In our swipe left, swipe right sort of culture, it's really easy to get caught up in the narrative that everything needs to be instant, including meaningful friendships. I think instant gratification has ruled and our ability to really appreciate the slow burn. It's one thing to really click with someone because you've got a shared love for 90s R&B and obscure true crime podcasts. It's another to really expect that initial spark to translate into a decade-long friendship filled with road trips and sleepovers and matching tattoos. I think friendships like all relationships really need time even the ones that you think are perfect right off the bat. There's no need to rush into all of that. You have time. With time, people really do be telling on themselves, you know? The truth is that not every online interaction that you have is destined to become a lifelong connection, and that's okay. Sometimes two people just don't vibe beyond a shared interest in cat memes, a similar for you page on TikTok, or, you know, a Saturday night out. Some friendships are just for that, and I think that's okay. That doesn't make that person any less fantastic. It doesn't make this friendship any less. It just means that some friendships are seasons and not forever. I think that it's really, really important to not feel disheartened by this because as you know, every really deep friendship once started off as strangers too, but it takes time. And so after five months of non-stop swiping, I made new friends, new memories, and the security guards outside of Scarlet knew me by name. If you're ever in a position like I once was, where you're just looking to meet new people online, this is honestly one of the easiest way to make some new friends. You'll be so surprised by the characters that you'll meet. These are some of the most laugh out loud moments that I get to think back on and share with my friends. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it and managed to get some tips out of it. If you've ever tried Bumble before, please know that I'm always down to spill the tea. And the only thing that beats that is getting the lowdown on other people's experiences and stories. Coming up in my next video, I'll be sharing what I did for my birthday picnic, forest core sort of vibe, just the art of gathering with friends. and. I 
I have an upcoming video, I believe, which is around what it's like to be part of the Eldest Daughter Club. I think that would be quite interesting, but be sure to catch me in my next video and I can't wait to see you then. I literally made a whole website for my birthday picnic, by the way. Like I, I obviously have a lot of time on my hands. <laughs>